Hello to all the friends and loyal followers of the Blue Cube YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well. In this video, I will teach you how to design a character's body for animation preparation. Well, friends, if you watched the previous lesson, you learned how to design a character's face. You also learned how to parent different facial components to the main face layer, which was the head layer, and I explained how to do the parenting. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure to check it out. After parenting, we explained that all facial parts move together. Now, we're going to design the character's body. First, I'll draw the character's neck. To ensure the neck and head move simultaneously, I place the neck layer within the main head layer. I'll zoom in slightly on the head layer so you can see the details better. I'll double click on the head layer using the transform tool, then select the rectangle tool. In previous lessons, I taught you that in the rectangle options section, we can apply curvature to the corners. Now, to draw the neck, I'll enter the value 20 for the upper corners and 5 for the lower corners. Then, I'll create the shape with the rectangle tool. The resulting shape has more curvature at the top and less at the bottom. It's now roughly suitable for me. I select a skin color for the body, select the shape, and press Ctrl plus X. I create another layer in the head symbol. I'll delete the existing empty layer. Then, I create a new layer that should be below the head layer. While on the new layer, I press Ctrl plus Shift to place the neck precisely where it previously was. So now, we have two layers, one head layer and one neck layer within the head symbol. I place the neck here. I slightly resize the neck, holding the Alt key to adjust only the top part. Now it looks good. Pressing Ctrl plus 1, I view the entire document. We've now successfully designed the character's neck. To declutter the layers and work more comfortably, I go to the top layer, create a folder named body in uppercase letters, and select all layers except the photo layer by holding shift and clicking. I drag all selected layers into the body folder. This way, all layers are neatly placed in the folder. Since we're not animating yet and only designing, I'll temporarily move and minimize the layers panel. This arrangement allows us to design more comfortably. From the window menu, I hide the output panel. This further simplifies our workspace. Whenever we want to reset settings, we can select workspace from the window menu and choose reset basic. I'll temporarily place the layers panel here. Now, I create a new layer named body in lowercase. On this body layer, I select the rectangle tool again. This time, I apply a curvature of 10 to the top corners and 40 to the bottom corners, as I want the lower body to be more rounded. I zoom in slightly and draw a rectangle. I'll position it here. Then I double click on the character's neck, right click, and convert it to a symbol. Returning to the body, I select a suitable color, something different. Selecting the selection tool, I want to curve the shoulders slightly. Using the free transform tool, I double click on the body layer. A message appears stating the shape must be converted into a drawing object to edit, so I click OK. Now in the drawing object mode, I select the selection tool and slightly lift this part upwards. Next, selecting the sub selection tool, I click on this stroke line to reveal the points for adjustments. I zoom in further. Selecting the pen tool, I add a point above the stomach area to create a bulge and adjust it using the subselection tool. Now, I'll refine the character's waist. We can create additional curves here. This character body shape is currently good, and we can adjust it further later. To exit the drawing object mode, I click on the scene. Currently, I won't convert the shapes into symbols to allow further modifications later. I'll hide and lock the body layer for now. For the character's arm, I'll use the rectangle tool again, setting corners to zero for sharp edges. Create a new layer named arm, draw the character's arm, and use the selection tool to round its corners fully. I'll place it here, set the anchor point here, and slightly rotate it. 
I enable the body layer briefly to align the arm with the body, then hide the body layer again. Holding Alt, I enlarge the arm. Duplicate this layer, naming it Forearm. Now, I adjust the forearm to match the image. Later, I'll explain how to remove these extra lines. So we have an arm layer and a forearm layer. Double-clicking on the arm and clicking OK, we convert it to a drawing object to make further adjustments. Now, I zoom in on the joint between the arm and forearm. Enabling Outline Mode, we see rounded lines necessary for proper rotation. To remove this line, I draw a circle over the joint, ensuring its stroke is deleted. Now, the circle is below the forearm, so I select and convert it to an object placing it over the forearm. This ensures proper arm rotation. Now to create the fingers, I create a new layer. Using the pen tool, I draw the hand shape, close the shape, and hold Alt while adjusting handles to match the image precisely. Holding Alt activates the Convert Anchor Point tool. Now, selecting the Paint Bucket tool, I choose a skin color and click to fill, placing this layer below the arm and forearm layers. Finally, to create the fingernails, I again use the rectangle tool, slightly rounding the corners, selecting white color, resizing it, and placing it here. I hold down the Alt key and copy this nail for the other fingers. All these nails have been created in the hand layer. Now. I turn on the body layer. This way, we've created the character's hand and body. To create the other hand, we don't need to repeat these steps. Simply select the hand-related layers, right-click, and choose Duplicate. Now, I position the other hand appropriately. This hand should be underneath the body, so I place its layers below the body layer. Now, I adjust its position. Okay, I hide these layers. I mistakenly named the head layer as body, so I correct it. I create a new layer and name it pelvis. I draw a rectangle with rounded corners. Like the previous shapes I described, I adjust it and place it correctly. I select this shape individually. I turn on the body layer to properly align the body and pelvis. I use the subselection tool to adjust the points. With the free transform tool, I double click the pelvis shape. Select this stroke using the selection tool and delete it by pressing the delete key on the keyboard. I zoom into the character's foot and hide all layers except the pelvis. I lock the pelvis layer. 
I create a new layer for the thigh and draw a rectangle. I adjust it similarly to the previous shapes explained earlier and place it correctly. I zoom in slightly and make the corners rounder. I click on the document and place the thigh layer under the pelvis layer. I create a new layer for the lower leg with rounded corners and align it with the character's image. I create a new layer for the shoe. First, I draw the top part of the shoe bone, then use the pen tool to draw the shoe. I select blue for the shoe and adjust the points according to the image. I place the shoe layer beneath the thigh and lower leg layers. Now, I select all three leg-related layers and duplicate them. I adjust the front leg using the transform tool. I place these three leg-related layers under the pelvis layer. Now, I turn on all layers and press Ctrl plus 1. Currently, the character's front hand has moved beneath the pelvis, so I must select the hand-related layers and move them above the pelvis and body layers. This solves the issue. Additionally, the bottom side of the character's hand must be visible and should not have nails, so I zoom in slightly and delete the nails from this hand. The character's head and neck layers should also be above the body layer. Thus, we've successfully designed the character's body. Now you can slightly adjust the pose of the legs to avoid having overly straight lines. You can select all leg-related layers and change their colors. Well, friends, that's our character's initial design. In the next tutorial, we'll focus on the details, rigging, and various poses of the character. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, goodbye.